Hey there and welcome to the demo that's going to show you how to create custom templates for the web data tree. Now the tree is quite flexible and gives you a chance to format things just about any way you want. So if we take a look at this tree here you can see that the child nodes have this little icon next to it plus the link and um, it's pretty basic of what I'm showing you here but it gets the point across that you can reach in and do just about anything that you want with it. So let's go ahead and show you how it's done. So here we are in Visual Studio 2008 and this is running against the 2009 volume 1 version of our web client tools and, and we've got a script manager on the page and a web data tree. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and bind it up to some data. So we'll create a new data source. Now the, the tree will only bind to hierarchical data so in our case right here let's go ahead and bring it up to an XML data source and I have a file here that has listings for those websites and the XPath expression that we'll use is sites and then group. So let's click OK and now we've got some data being bound to the control. Now that we've got some data let's go ahead and add in uh, a parent template because the different parts of the tree will have a different layout to them. So for the template ID here I'm going to put in parent and we'll just hit apply and then OK. So now when we go into the source you can see that under our template section we have a template ID equal parent. Now just to keep things nice and clean I'm going to make the ID equal to the template ID and actually we need more than one. Uh, we need a parent and we also need a child. So we'll copy this and call this child and that as well. So for the parent, the, the template content that we're, we're injecting into here is, is basically just the title that's coming from uh, the XML data. So you can see what we're working with here. If we come over here and you see that we have the sites and then we have a group. The group is called social sites and then inside that group we have a site and it has a name, navigate URL, image URL, and, and that on down the line. So this is the data structure that we're using. So for the, the title here of, of the group we'll just emit out the title. Now for the child there's a little bit more to it. Uh, what we want to do is create a, a hyperlink around an image and the text. So I would need to open up the template. Thank you IntelliSense. And then I'm just going to paste in some code here that we can review. So what's happening is we have our anchor tag and we're, we're emitting out the navigate URL and then we're bringing in an image. Now the image, if you recall, uses the, the tilde which is a, a convention in ASP.NET that says go to the root of the site. So in order to, to resolve that the, the, to be the URL that we need it to be we have to call this method on the page resolve URL and that will take care of it for us. The alt tag will be the name of the site and we're turning off any borders so that uh, when we have a hyperlink around it, the image doesn't show up with the border. And then right next to it we have basically the same anchor tag around the name. I did it this way because if there's a space between a link and an image, that space will be underlined and this kind of takes care of that without having to turn it off through CSS. You can obviously do it any way you want to though. So that's good, but the next thing that we need to do is come in and handle an event and the event that we need to handle is the node bound and that is so that as the the nodes are being bound up to the tree we can tell which item which template to use. So if we look at the event args and take a look at the node and interrogate its level. If we're looking at level 1 then what we can do is say that this nodes template ID is equal to parent and we can also give it a CSS class as well. And for this simple example, <laughs> else, uh, if, it, if it's not at level zero, then the node will get the template ID of child. and also the CSS class of child. Let's build that to make sure everything works. 
So then really the only other thing we need is some styling in there since we're applying these CSS classes. Now I have some CSS set aside for us. So I'll just paste it in here and we can take a look at it. Now the Infragistics controls come with many elements that already have classes applied to them. So you can go in and find out which items you're looking for. And, and, and usually what I like to do is use Firebug. Let's go ahead and run this page and I'll show you how we can find individual items that you might be looking for. Oops. I guess it helps when you wrap everything within a style tag. Let's do that. Okay, so I just f forgot to copy the first one. So if we run this, that uh, I have a Visual Studio set up to to launch an IE, but if I bring it up in Firefox and click on this little bug down here in the corner, this is Firebug. This gives me a chance to take a look at the the style sheets that are associated with this item. Now I already applied the styles, but if I come in here and I look for IGDT control. You, you can turn these items on and off to see how that affects your, your, your style. And that's how I found um, the items that I knew that I needed to manipulate. So for the IGDT underscore, underscore control, I'm setting the font size to medium. The node root, I want the color to be black and the font weight to be normal. Because by default, it, I think it's a blue color and it's, it's, uh, it's bolded. So I'm showing you how you can overwrite some of these. And then I change the font and then basically just do some, some basic formatting of, of fonts and, and padding. So that gives us the final results of something that looks a lot like this. So the main takeaway to this is to know that you can come in to find as many templates as you want, apply them to the nodes that you want based off of their level or any other criteria. And then you use the eval method here in order to take a look at the, the, the data structure that's being passed into it in order to emit it out in the template. So I hope you find this helpful. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.